And welcome once again to The Verdict. Hello, I'm Mick Cornett along with Kent Myers. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And today we welcome in a first time visitor, but one that very, very many people are going to get to know very quickly. Yes, a newcomer to uh, the state of Oklahoma and to the University of Oklahoma, Coach Lon Kruger, the new uh, men's basketball coach at the University of Oklahoma, has agreed to come talk to us about what he's doing and how he's getting the program started up and running and uh, he's off to a very fast start. A great succession of leadership and some spectacular results throughout his career as a head basketball coach. You'll meet Long Kruger today on The Verdict. America has been here before, faced with daunting challenges, and we've always found the courage to lead foreign oil greenhouse gases we have the power to do something about them with american natural gas chesapeake is forging ahead converting our fleets to clean burning natural gas vehicles encouraging others to do the same welcome to america chesapeake america's champion of natural gas Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Bow my head to pray I know you hear each word I say I'm pouring out my heart to you like water I have faith I have faith I have faith Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're really pleased to have us uh, join us on The Verdict, uh, Lon Kruger, the new and the 14th head coach uh, for the men's uh, basketball program at the University of Oklahoma. Lon uh, did his undergraduate work at Kansas State University where he played uh, uh, in a stellar fashion for the Wildcats and, and dealt uh, Oklahoma a lot of grief, I might add, over that period of time. He uh, <clears throat> got his master's degree from Pittsburgh State University. He's been coaching for a number of years. Uh, he's been at seven head coaching positions, starting with Pan American, then to Kansas State, then to Florida, then to Illinois, then to Las Vegas, and now here at the University of Oklahoma. He had a couple of uh, stops in the NBA as well. He was an assistant coach with the New York Knicks and head, head coach with the Atlanta Hawks. One other interesting thing about Lon I want to point out since we've done a couple of shows on three sport athletes. Uh, when Lon graduated from Kansas State, uh, he was drafted by the, in the NBA by the Atlanta Hawks. He was drafted in, the, uh, by, in uh, Major League Baseball by the St. Louis Cardinals. He was invited by the Dallas Cowboys to camp as a quarterback. He is quite an all-round athlete as well as a fine coach. He now has a, compiled an amazing record of 479 victories and we hope you'll finish out the 500 in your first season here at Norman, or at least in the second. So welcome to The Verdict. Thank you. My pleasure to be with you. It's good to have you here, folks. Thank you for coming on. My pleasure. Now tell me about uh, being acclimated, coming into to Norman. You, you've been here uh, in Norman many times. As the opposing coach, what's it like to, to be here with when, when you have a, a little higher level of, of love and respect and, and as the head coach? Well, Mayor, you know how friendly people <clears throat> in Oklahoma are, and uh, they've been great. Uh, the reception has been outstanding, and the opportunity to travel around the state a little bit uh, with recruiting, and then also mm -hmm. around campus in meeting some students. And uh, a big uh, challenge is getting people in the arena and 
and making it a, a, an atmosphere where mm -hmm. people enjoy it, uh, bring their families, have a great time, and uh, cheer on the Sooners. What advice can you give to someone who's the new guy? You've, you've been the new guy in, in several head coaching stops. Certainly you've learned from, from past experiences the best way to come in and get acclimated and, and to start building a, 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 a degree of leadership. What have you learned throughout those, those, those opportunities? Well, to listen very carefully and, and ask questions of those people that have a lot better idea of what's going on than, than we do. You mean not they, make they, assumptions they, coming in about what it's going to be like? I think that's a, a, a very good way to do it because, mm -hmm. again, when you talk to the players, you talk to other coaches that have been here in the past, you talk to the administration, the fans that are here right now, they've got a much better idea about what's going on with Sooner basketball than I do. So listening very carefully and asking as many people that, that are in the know uh, anytime you possibly can. You've been in a number of different uh, positions, as we outlined in the introduction. Uh, from the collegiate to the pro ranks, what was the most challenging position that, uh, that you took uh, initially, where you, you faced the greatest obstacles going in? They, they've all been enjoyable for, for different reasons. Always, uh, we've been very fortunate to work with really good people, people that are uh, you know, highly motivated, people that have done a great job in their fields, uh, probably the unique opportunity was in Atlanta in the NBA. The mm -hmm. other coaching positions in college are, are, are more similar. The NBA certainly is, is similar in some ways but different in a lot of others. So going into Atlanta we thought we'd go in there and just change that culture and we didn't do it and ended up getting fired two and a half years later and, <laughs> and that was a unique experience uh, at that uh, time. We were about 50 years old and getting fired and kind of gives you a, a different perspective on the world. Mm -hmm. You'll be working along with uh, President David Boren and Athletic Director Joe Castiglione. How has that relationship begun, and do you see that their model of, of, of leadership being different from your previous stops and your relationships with the President and Athletic Director? They've done a great job. As you know, President Boren, I can't imagine any other individual that's impacted not only the university, but the state of Oklahoma more than he has right. during his career. What a remarkable man. And Joe Castiglione, in his area of uh, work is very highly respected among his peers in the country, uh, has done a great job and uh, uh, we're leaving very good leadership at UNLV. Uh, uh, the president there, Neil Smotrisk and uh, the AD, Jim Livengood, terrific leaders and, and they're doing a great job, but, but also a great leadership here, clearly. Mm -hmm. You've probably had a chance by now, if you didn't before you came, to assess the kind of support you're going to get from the university to build the program into a program that you're you're satisfied with if that ever ever occurs but uh, to build it into a, a better program than it is today are you satisfied with the support that you're getting and that you anticipate getting been here just a month and, and haven't lost a game yet so it's all <laughs> it's all really good uh, you know facilities are great facilities are great and I think that's the area where President Bourne and Joe Castiglione has done just a great job in that area the administration the, the people that we're working with every day clearly do a, a very good job and uh, the support has been great. The students, again, we've got to get out there and get after the students and the former players. Those are probably the two areas we really want to be most aggressive with, getting the former players back and, and really taking ownership of their program. They've done a lot uh, for the tradition of Oklahoma basketball and then again the students. Anywhere we've been where the atmosphere is really good, the cornerstone has always been the, the band, the cheer, the dance, the students you know, those groups uh, getting in the middle of it and uh, creating a great atmosphere. Since you've become a head college basketball coach, college basketball has, has seems to have changed quite a bit. The, the manner in which uh, the players develop their talents it start, seems to be a little bit younger. The manner at which they have contact with college coaches seems to start a little bit earlier. Then, on the flip side, the highly talented players who are enticed to go to professional ranks seems to happen earlier. That's a big difference from where it was when you started. How, how have you handled the changes and what reflections can you make on, on that trend? It's changed a lot. Uh, uh, there have always been really good players uh, in, in college basketball. I think today there are more of them on every team. The players seem to be uh, uh, focusing on one sport earlier today than they did 20 years ago. They were, you're growing up, you, you play a lot of different sports. Today, they're traveling all over the country in the summertime, the spring, the fall playing with their club teams right. and that was a big difference from what it was 20 years ago. It used to be the high school team was the focus. Today uh, they play a lot more basketball in the spring, summer and fall than they do during their high school season. So, so that has changed things a lot. Is the year-round training of a young basketball player, is that a good thing or is, is it maybe not a good thing or a bad thing? It's just something you have to accept and, and deal with. It's something that uh, we accept for sure. I think in some cases it can, it can be a good thing. In other cases I think young people today miss out on 
not playing three or four different sports in high school because of the experience he gained from that. Are they fundamentally stronger because of the, 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 the intense coaching that they receive at that high level? Uh, that can be argued either way. Uh, you know, sometimes people uh, today think that uh, the Europeans are, are more fundamentally advanced than we are. Uh, again, they play so much in the summer as opposed to practicing in mm -hmm. the summer. Uh, I think the fundamentals, uh, in, in some cases, they're very good. In other cases, maybe not as strong as we'd like to see. Do you see their offensive skills being more uh, in better situation than their defensive skills or vice versa? Can you see it? Can For you the see most part, there? offensively, they're ahead of the defensive end of it. Uh, when you go out to the gym on your own or, or, or pick up game with three or four guys, they're not focusing too much on the defensive <laughs> end of it. They're all shooting a three-pointer or, or dunking, you know, one of those two things. But, uh, but no, the, the skill level, though, is much improved over what it was 20 years ago. What, from an injury standpoint to uh, a young athlete, uh, what changes, if any, have you seen? Uh, are, the, are the athletes uh, less prone to injury today than they were 15, 20 years ago, or do you think they're more prone to knee injuries uh, and the like? Probably uh, because of the condition that they're in and, and the fact that they're, they're just, there's advances made in the training and the preparation. Mm -hmm. I think they're more conditioned, more highly conditioned today than they've ever been, so that probably would prevent injury to a certain degree. On the other side, they play so much during the weekend. They may play five or six games in, in two days. I think at the end of that weekend, sometimes because of fatigue, they're exposed to more injuries. So, uh, but again, they're more highly conditioned, more ready to play today than they were 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. It seems that the recuperation period may be shorter today than it might have been 15 or 20 years ago with the advanced surgical techniques and the like. No question, they bounce back from, uh, from uh, medical procedures much qu more quickly today than they did a few years ago. I think advancement in everything across the board and in the medical aspect as well. Let's take a break. Lon Kruger is our guest. He's the new head basketball coach at the University of Oklahoma. You're watching The Verdict, and we'll be right back. The thing that has made the most sense for me is realizing that I am still an educator, and that is what I do at the Chickasaw Nation. I'm Dr. Amanda cobb Greetham. I'm a historian, and I'm Chickasaw. The Chickasaw Cultural Center is amazing. It is a very, very special place devoted to the sharing and to the celebration of Chickasaw history and culture. State-of-the-art technology exhibits that are not like anything I've ever seen. The Spirit Forest is incredible, and you feel as if you have actually just walked into a forest with huge trees all around you. It's timeless, and yet it's sort of also representative of our time depth, to really just sort of reach through time and touch the past. By the end of the exhibits, you really have a sense of Chickasaw cultural and political resurgence, and the extent to which we are a healthy, dynamic, and vital tribe today. Chickasaws have always been an inclusive people. This is something for the whole community and for the state of Oklahoma. Every time our country imports energy, we're saying we've lost confidence in our own. But Oklahomans know under the land of the free lies the energy to be brave. Advanced technology has led to vast discoveries of oil and natural gas that have doubled America's supply estimates. Using one well to do the work of 10 and half the time, we're proving that America's best answers will always come from inside our borders. Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry, advancing our state, empowering our nation. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers and our, our guest, head basketball coach at the University of Oklahoma, Long Kruger. Coach, talk about the personnel that the Sooners will be bringing into this 11-12 uh, season. We've got a good group of young guys. Uh, you know, last year, uh, uh, not, not too many seniors, so uh, most everyone returned. They've worked awfully hard. You're limited in the spring as to what you can do with them on the court, but they've worked uh, really hard. They've had a great attitude. Yo-Yo, uh, our strength and conditioning guy, does a great job with them uh, from the conditioning uh, standpoint. And uh, guys are getting a lot of extra shooting in, and 
and uh, anxious to move forward. You had a really successful tenure at uh, your most recent stop in Las Vegas. Uh, was it difficult to decide to leave uh, Las Vegas where you were, as I say, very successful and uh, very well respected and appreciated and, and uh, jump out and come to Oklahoma? Anytime you make a move, it, it's difficult on, on the one end, but exciting on the other. Uh, again, great leadership uh, at UNLV, uh, outstanding group of young players, a really good team returning. Uh, my wife Barb and I, we love living in Las Vegas. It's a great community, and, and people that aren't living there don't realize all the the, the great things about Vegas away from the Strip. You know, people from outside mm -hmm. view it as a city with the Strip, but uh, you go there only when you want to, and it's a great uh, great entertainment and uh, great restaurants and a lot of opportunities there. But on the other hand, really excited about being back in the Midwest. Growing up in Kansas, Kansas State background, uh, feels like coming home in a lot of ways, and people here have been so friendly and looking forward to what mm -hmm. lies ahead. What can you tell us about the differences of young people from when you were growing up in Kansas to today when you see a recruit, there's, it's obviously a different world that they're growing up to. The, the, the kids may be similar, but the world they're growing up in is vastly different th than that one. It's a lot different. Uh, you know, growing up in the Midwest, and I was one of six children, and, and we're outside all the time, and we're, we're making up our own games, and, and uh, I think a little bit more creative in, in what we're doing today. It seems like everything's organized from a very early start. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that necessarily, but you're playing, uh, my first encounter was on a, uh, in baseball with an 11 and 12 year old team and that was pretty normal back then and they, you're, you're starting at four and five years of age playing, you know, t-ball or soccer, things are much more organized. Of course the social networks are, are, have changed mm -hmm. everything, you know, we never thought about, uh, you know, walking around and, and texting or, or talking uh, on cell phones growing up and today kids are never without that cell phone. and and texting someone all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, there's very little sense of privacy anymore. And as a, as a coach or any administrator who's looking after young people and, and to a certain extent trying to protect them or the program or the university, that's got to be a constant fear of just what's out there and who's responsible for it and what is the impact going to be. That's a huge uh, uh, challenge today. Uh, it used to be you talk about making good decisions that, you know, to your players on on weekends and now you're talking about the social networks and being very careful what you post and how you go about it because everything you put up there of course is is permanent and you've got to be very careful in how that represents not only you but your program and university. Mm -hmm. Has the uh, one and done rule or the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, leaving uh, college early to go to the NBA, has that affected the way you have to handle players as a head coach? Not so much. Uh, you, you certainly, it, it will make you uh, more flexible in terms of moving from one year to the next. Sometimes when yeah. you get a young guy, you don't know that you've got him for four years like right. you maybe did a few years ago. But anytime you can get a player of that quality, I think most coaches would welcome that. Mm -hmm. If you have to make that adjustment after a year or two, uh, certainly you're, you're willing to do that. But for the most part, I think young people play, you know, playing in college, staying in college as long as possible is, is generally a benefit to everyone involved. You have a reputation of being a, a, a person with great leadership skills. Who did you learn from? Who, who did you see and, and, uh, and perhaps try to, to, to follow or emulate? That would be a combination of a lot of people. I've had a lot of coaches growing up. Uh, most importantly, though, my parents. Uh, certainly mom and dad was, was the, the, the ideal uh, leaders of a family in the Midwest. Uh, uh, never once got home from school when mom wasn't there. Dad coached all of our little league teams growing up. and. Uh, so they, they did everything they could to, to make the lives of their children better. So I think the leadership there is where it starts. And then uh, Ellis Dahl was a high school coach, a very good small small school, 35 in the graduating class. Uh, everyone in that school played everything, all the sports, and, and that was exciting. And then Jack Hartman was a college coach, and he was a terrific coach. Uh, played for Coach Iba, mm -hmm. played for Mr. Iba at, uh, uh, in Stillwater. A good and, Oklahoman. Uh, a good Oklahoman, uh, Stillwell, <laughs> Oklahoma. Uh, played Canadian football, uh, uh, Canadian Football League after uh, college, but a terrific uh, college basketball coach and, and the guy I played for for four years. You've been known throughout your career always to run what I will call a clean program. You've uh, been able to uh, make sure that people did what they were supposed to do when they were supposed to do it, and yet you see an awful lot of programs around the country uh, in and out of difficulty with the NCAA and perhaps the law sometimes. Uh, how do you remain, how vigilant do you have to remain to make sure that, uh, that people are doing what they're supposed to be doing? 
again, growing up in a family where you know that was an expectation to, to treat others uh, well and with respect and and not take uh, you know shortcuts. You know, it's, it's, I've never sensed uh, or understood how you could take any pride in, in achievement if you cut corners to get there. You know, I think playing it by the rules is, uh, and it's always been. And Coach Hartman stressed this a lot. You know, taking great delight in beating people who did cut corners. And I think that's uh, uh, more satisfaction than that, than, than cutting corners and, and winning uh, with alternative uh, routes. So, but again, I don't know how you could stand up in front of a group of young men and teach them, you know, life lessons if you've cut corners to get them to your program. So, yeah. uh, never really think too much about that. Never have to think too much about that because I think growing up with those values and principles, uh, simply never thought about doing it any other way. Sometimes a coach comes into a program and they say, "Well, this is." the way we run our offense, this is the way we run our defense, and you plug the players in. And other times, coaches come in and they look at their players and they adapt to the players' unique talents. How do you weigh the, the opportunities there to, to develop a style for this upcoming season? It's a combination of the two. Uh, certainly, I think it's always more important to adjust to what the players do well. Uh, in, in the recruiting to college, you have the opportunity to recruit to a system maybe that you prefer, and, and, uh, and our preferred way of playing is, is to to recruit the uh, type of players, athletes, it can dictate on both ends of the floor. We want to mm -hmm. push it offensively and attack in transition and, and get out and take passes away defensively and try to create some uh, from turnovers, some, some offense going the other way. So mm -hmm. I think players like playing that way. I think it's a, it's a game where, where fans like cheering and, and supporting, you know, where there's a tempo to it, there's a pace to it, and there's attacking mode on both ends of the floor. What are the fundamental defensive philosophies you bring to, to wherever you're going to be? We've been predominantly, uh, almost exclusively, a man-to-man -man defensive team. We need to play more zone. We need to do more things other than man. But in the last few years, we've, we've gone mostly with man-to-man -man defense, picking up full court, trapping when the opportunity uh, presents itself. But we'll uh, look to mix in more zone from time to time. But still, at the base, will be a man-to-man -man principle. Okay. You seem to be getting out into the community fast. and. Uh, all across the community. I noticed just very recently you had a group of meetings with, with students uh, at the University of Oklahoma, student leaders uh, as, uh, and students who may or may not have been leaders. But in any event, you're trying to encourage the student support. How important is that? It's extremely important. I think, again, it's the cornerstone of the atmosphere uh, are the students. And, and we want to do everything we can to, to give them ownership of the atmosphere. And in Lloyd Noble, we want them to, to enjoy coming to the arena enjoy time with fellow students, with others in the community. A uh, very, very important part of, of what we're doing. A big big part of everything is, is sharing the ownership. And we want fans, we want former players, we want students to step up and take ownership of the Sooner basketball program and uh, enjoy doing it together. And uh, what do you think of the early fan support you've received? It's been fantastic. Uh, everywhere we go, people have been very warm. They've been very uh, open uh, in, in their reception. They uh, seem to, to be excited about this group of players that are coming back and, and at the heart of everything that we've talked about really it comes back to getting good players good people people that want to graduate people that want to represent well and people that enjoy doing it together with a team first type attitude well coach thanks so much for coming on the verdict we really appreciate your time my pleasure thank yeah, you good luck thank yeah. you long kruger is the new head basketball coach at the university of oklahoma kit and i'll be back right after this break with a final word coach thanks again for coming we'll be right back comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. 
All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. We are wrapping up a show with the University of Oklahoma men's basketball coach, Long Kruger. What an exciting time to be a part of that program. Indeed, and I don't see how Joe Castiglione continues to do it. Every time uh, he, there's a vacancy, he comes in with a, a somewhat surprising but an outstanding choice. Mm -hmm. I fully expect uh, Coach Kruger will uh, bring uh, the uh, Sooners back to uh, very good days of uh, one-loss records and tournament appearances. And um, he is certainly the kind of coach I can see young people being inspired to play for. Next week's show, we're going to talk about Africa. Uh, speaking of being inspired, mm -hmm. uh, next week's show, we're going to talk uh, with the two folks who went to Africa on the Pros for Africa trip. Uh, Reggie Whitten and Professor Cheryl Watley are going to join us and tell us about how their trip uh, to Africa went. We had a show with uh, Reggie before mm -hmm. they went uh, to Africa. We're going to be able to see some video and uh, hear some exciting uh, indeed inspiring stories. And uh, we'll give you some website information, how you can get more information about Coach Kruger and his Oklahoma basketball program. You can go to OUHoops.com. That's OUHoops.com. Also, we'd like to hear from you if you've got an idea for a show you'd like to see on The Verdict. We can help you out by sending you to our website. It's at TheVerdict.tv. That's TheVerdict.tv. Head there and tell us about a guest or a show topic that you'd like to enjoy on an upcoming edition of The Verdict. But for today, that's going to do it. For Kent Myers, <laughs> I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next week right here on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.